Hello friends, welcome to Royal Kim Classes. So today in this session, we are going to discuss about IR stretching frequency of metal carbides. Before starting the session, you must have a proper understanding about bonding in metal carbides. So if you did not watch our previous video on bonding in metal carbides, you can watch it here. So let's start today's session. Friends, all of you guys might have learned about IR spectroscopy, right? IR spectroscopy is a promising spectroscopic technique to determine the functional groups in an organic compound, also the natural bonds in it. So in IR spectroscopy, you might have learned about a formula for finding the stretching frequency of any bond. Suppose if I have bond between A and B, A and B having molar masses MA and MB, we can write the stretching frequency, stretching frequency as per IR spectroscopy or uh, stretching frequency of this bond as per the formula as mu stretching mu stretching is equal to 1 by 2 by square root of k by mu right but what are these terms here k is the force constant here k is the force constant or you can say bond strength parameter right bond strength parameter mu is the reduced mass what is reduced mass uh, reduced mass in this case here we have a and b atoms connected with a bond having molar masses m a and m b right so we can write the mu reduced mass as m a into m b divided by m a plus m b this is called reduced mass right so this is the expression so using this expression we can find out the stretching frequency of this ball between a and b this is what we learned in ir spectroscopy now we have to connect this formula with the metal carbonate metal carbonate bonding and we have to find out the stretching frequency of metal carbonates both uh, for example we can take the metal carbonate we can we can represent it as MC triple bond O, right? This was metal carbonate bond, right? So here we have to connect this formula with this metal carbonate and have to check the stretching frequencies of different metal carbonate bonds before and after pi back bonding with the metal. Sorry, pi back bonding of metal with the carbon, right? Okay, fine. So here you can see that the stretching frequency is directly proportional to the force constant and it is inversely proportional to the reduced mass. So as per this formula we can say that force constant K is directly proportional to bond strength bond strength also mu, mu is directly proportional to force constant when the bond strength increases the K value increases and the new value also increases. This is the relation between these three, right? So whenever the bond strength increases, when, when, when the bond strength will increase? That's the next question. Bond strength is directly proportional to bond order, right? Bond strength, you can write it as bond strength is directly proportional to bond order. Am I right? Bond strength is directly proportional to bond order. So the bond strength is directly proportional to bond order. Now, what is bond order? Bond order is nothing but it is the number of bonds between two atoms. So here in this case, we have A and B, right? So A and B can have single bond. You can see it's a single bond or A and B can have double bond or triple bond. Then the corresponding bond order will be one, two here and it will be three here because there are three number of bonds, right? So whenever the bond order increases, the bond strength, bond strength increases because the number of bonds between them is increasing. Obviously, the bond strength will increase, right? So whenever the bond strength increases, the K value increases and the new value also increases. So the connection is that the bond strength increases, bond strength increases, the K value also increases, and the new value will also increase. Now we have to connect these relations with the bonding in metal carbonates 
and we have to find out the relation of metal carbonyl stretching frequencies of different compounds before and after the pi backbonding of metal with the carbon. So let's check it out. Friends, first of all, let's refresh the bonding of metal carbonates. We have to check what will happen to the bond between carbon and oxygen in carbonyl group after the pi backbonding of metal with carbon in the carbonyl group. So let's take a metal M, metal M having a bond with the carbonyl group, C triple bond O. Okay, C triple bond O. Here the first bond is a bonding bond, we know that fine. And look, here we have three bonds between carbon and oxygen. This is a normal metal carbonyl bond. And I'm keeping a carbonyl group separately here, just for the reference. This is a carbonyl group having positive charge on oxygen and negative charge on carbon and here the bond order number of bonds is 3 so that we can write it as bond order is equal to bond order is equal to 3 right okay here also you can see bond order is equal to 3 before the pi back bonding now now let's go to the scenario here the metal is doing a back pi back bonding with the carbon using its d electrons right so we will get a second bond that's a pi bond, right? Obviously, it's a pi bond. So we will get a second bond. So this is the pi back bonding, right? Pi back bonding. So what will happen? Look, due to this pi back bonding of the metal with this carbonyl group, the bond, the third bond, you can see obviously the third bond between carbon and oxygen is an extra bond because we know that oxygen can have only two bonds, right? So the third bond is an extra bond. That was also a uh, you know, that is also a coordination, coordinate bond between oxygen and carbon, right? Oxygen donated its lone pair of electrons to the carbon. Okay, that's an unstable bond, obviously. What will happen? What will happen? So, due to this pi back bonding, the electron density of carbon will increase. Obviously, it will increase. Now, the carbon has five bonds, right? One, two, and three. So, three plus two it is five. So carbon will try to avoid the third bond between third bond between whom between oxygen. So the third bond between oxygen and carbon will get reduced. So we can use it, we can represent it with a dash line. Okay. Because of the metal carbonate back bonding, the third bond between carbon and oxygen will get weak. Why it's getting weak? Because the electron density of carbon will increase due to the pi back bond because this bond is a strong this bond is a strong bond so this third bond will get weak weaker okay so what will happen obviously here the bond order was three now here the bond order bond order we can represent with uh, b o b o will be less than will be less than three bond order will be oh sorry what am i doing bond order will be less than three fine here the bond order will be less than three so compared to the initial condition of carbonyl group, now the bond order is decreasing due to the back bonding of metal with the carbonyl group. Okay, I hope you got it. So you can say that as per the previous relation, we know that bond strength, bond strength is directly proportional to bond order. So which carbonyl group, which carbonyl group, I mean the Initial carbonyl group is here and the carbonyl group with the metal is here. Which one will have higher K value? Of course, this will have the initial carbonyl group will have more K value, right? The K value increases because why the K value increases? Because the bond order is 3 here, here the bond order is less than 3. Obviously, the K value will K value will decrease here, right? Because we know that bond strength is directly proportional to K. Bond strength bone strength is directly proportional to k value fine so if the metal carbonyl backboarding is happening then the carbonyl frequency or carbonyl what is your note frequency carbonyl bone strength will reduce because the bone order is decreasing the third bone is getting weaker and the bone order is decreasing right because of the decrease in bone order the bone strength will decrease Due to the decrease in bond strength, the K value will decrease. Now we have to connect it with the expression mu is equal to 1 by 2 pi square root of K by mu. This is our expression, right? So if you connect 
this expression with all scenario you can say that due to the pi back bonding and due to the pi back bonding of metal with the carbonyl group the k value decreases obviously the new of wo new of carbonyl group c triple bond o will decrease right so if the pi back bonding in a metal carbonyl group is you know dominant or dominating dominating over the carbonyl uh, carbonyl bond of carbonyl group with the metal then the carbonyl stretching frequency will decrease because the bond bonding is decreasing so we can say that here in this case pi back bonding pi back bonding increases k value decreases k value of c triple bond o okay k value of c triple bond o decreases so we can write k c triple bond o decreases so the mu value new value decreases okay this is the relation this is the relation at the same time what will happen to the metal carbonyl bond in the metal carbonyl bond the stretching frequency increases because the k value is increasing because the due to the pi back bonding the bond order became 2 since the bond order is 2 the k value increases and the corresponding new mc increases but due to the pi back bonding here the k value decreases so new c triple bond o decreases so this is the relation of stretching frequency with the pi back bonding in metal carbonyls i hope you got it now let's do a example friends here i have three complexes one in co6 times two minus cr co6 times minus and m and co6 times here we have to check the order of stretching frequency of carbonyl group and the order of stretching frequency of metal carbonyl bond okay these two things we have to find out fine so first of all we can go for the stretching frequency of carbonyl groups in these forms okay then we can find out the metal carbonyl stretching frequency fine let's see look here in these complexes here in these complexes first of all we have to find out in which one of them have higher pi back bonding with the carbonyl metal pi back bonding with the carbonyl for that we can you know uh, we can check the factors affecting pi back bonding factors affecting pi back bonding right so factors affecting pi back bonding there is a one factor called the charge of the complex we know that charge of the complex because here you can see that the metal is vanadium chromium and manganese and we can see that there is charge of the complex is the charge of the complex is different so we can use the uh, parameter charge on the complex okay we know that when the charge of the complex Uh, is negative the negative charge of the complex increases the metal carbonyl back bonding increases that we know right because uh, or you can write it here like this negative charge negative charge on the complex on the complex increases what will happen definitely uh, carbonyl metal carbonyl back bonding increases so you can write it as mc back bonding back bonding increases this is the relation right then you can see here here the metal order of metal carbonyl back bonding will be this one bco6 times 2 minus greater than crco6 times minus greater than m and co6 times because it has two minus charge uh, and one minus charge and it doesn't have any charge it's a neutral complex right so this will be the order of metal carbonyl pi back bonding this is the order of order of metal carbonyl pi back bond okay mc back bond fine this is the order of metal carbonyl pi back bond so what will happen the, if this is the order of metal carbonyl pi back bonding we know that we know that when the pi back bonding increases pi back bonding pi back bonding increases what will happen of course the bond C triple bond O bond strength. C triple bond O bond strength will decrease, right? So the order of bond strength of carbonyl groups will be order of. We can write the order of 
C triple bond or bond strength bond strength we can check it out bond strength will be the least the one which is having least uh, pi back bonding that is M and CO6 times in that case the order of the pi back bonding will be less pi back bonding metal carbonyl pi back bonding will be less because of that the carbonyl bond strength will be higher so the order will be M and CO6 times greater than CrCO6 times minus the reverse of this order right because this is the order of metal carbonyl pi back bonding so the reverse of that order will be the carbonyl bond strength so MnCO6 times greater than CrCO6 times minus greater than what vanadium CO6 times 2 minus this is the order if this is the order of carbonyl bond strength then this will be the order of this will be the order of carbonyl stretching frequency mu C, C triple bond O mu C triple bond O this will be the order of stretching frequency of these complexes fine okay and this will be the order of this will be the order of stretching frequency of metal carbonyl bond because the pi back bonding is more in this complex so the bond between metal and carbon will be stronger in this complex one area co6 times to one is and it will be least in m and co6 times so this is the order of metal carbonate stretching frequency and this is the order of carbonate stretching frequency i hope you got it so this is how we can connect the ir stretching frequency of carbonyl compounds with the uh, you know with the pipe backboarding i hope you got it so friends by this we can conclude today's session i hope you guys got a better idea about ir stretching frequency of metal carbonates thank you for watching keep learning it with royal camp